Have you ever wanted to share an internet connection from your main home to a second building, but found out that the connection in the second location was just too spotty to use? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you a solution that I use to improve that flaky signal that's cost-effective, efficient, and best of all, really, really easy to do. Hopefully, this will solve your irregular connection like it did mine. Now I do want to put forth the disclaimer that for this to work, you have to at least be able to pick up a signal somewhere in your secondary building. If you can't do that, then this is not going to help you at all. Also, this is not a wireless bridge, nor is it a wireless access point. We will be piggybacking off of our primary wireless network to create a second network for that secondary location, and we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi to do it. But enough of the boring stuff. Let's see how this works. Okay, so here's the problem that I ran into. In addition to my main home, I have a small cabin. I wanted to get an internet connection to the cabin for any guests who may stay there. I wanted to do this without paying for an additional internet service, and it's not really practical for me to run an ethernet cable from my main house to the cabin. In my main house, my wireless router was set up about like this, upstairs in the middle of the house. With this setup, I was getting a weak signal to the front of the cabin. I tried using a Roku player to watch a few YouTube videos, and though it was okay sometimes, other times it would stutter, so I figured I could do better. I moved my Wi-Fi router to the back of my main house, and though this did help, it was still not exactly ideal. I found that the connection in the front of the cabin was slightly stronger, and in the back of the cabin there was still no real usable connection. However, walking around I did find a perfect sweet spot by one of the front windows of the cabin, and if I sat my phone in that window, the connection stayed pretty close to 100%. My first thought was to set up a second router in that window as a wireless repeater. I have an old cheap Netgear router lying around, so it should be pretty simple. Nope. This particular router, unfortunately, does not support setup as a repeater. So I considered ordering a different router with repeater capability, but then the idea hit me to try using internet connection sharing to my low-end secondary router in the cabin. Then I looked into my options with using a Raspberry Pi as the connection point. As it turns out, it's incredibly easy to set up. The nice thing about doing it this way is not only the simplicity of the setup, but it also acts as a second segregated network and enabled me to have four open Ethernet ports in the cabin for cabled devices if necessary. To get this set up, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi and a micro SD card of at least 8 gigabytes. You will also need a secondary wireless router to which you will feed your internet connection from the Raspberry Pi. You'll also need a mouse and a keyboard for the initial setup. For software, you will need to download Bellina Etcher. You can get this at bellina.io slash etcher. You will also need to download the operating system for your Raspberry Pi. I downloaded Lubuntu 16.04.2 from ubuntupiflavormaker.org slash download. You will need a torrent application to download this file. I use uTorrent. You can get that at uTorrent.com. Okay, so to download the Lubuntu file from UbuntuPyFlavorMaker.org, I had to right-click the Lubuntu icon and save link as. You save the torrent, then open it, and it opens right up in uTorrent. It'll take a few minutes for this to download. We're going to use Etcher to burn that Lubuntu image to our SD card. Okay, so Etcher has finished flashing our drive, so we can eject that and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Now for this part, after the SD card is inserted, plug a keyboard, mouse, and monitor into the Raspberry Pi. We're ready to apply power and we're going to configure our operating system. Okay, so if you did everything right, once you boot your Raspberry Pi, this is what you should see. Go through the installer setup, follow the on-screen prompts. and connect to your Wi-Fi network. Yeah, 
Here you're going to set a name and password. I'm going to call this bridge. It's not an actual bridge technically. For all intents and purposes, that's what we're going to call it for this. Here put in a secure password. This part is going to take five ever. Okay, so after a very long time of waiting for that initial setup, this is what you're gonna see. And uh, it's not gonna do that every time you boot up. That was a one-time thing. Right now, to configure this, you're gonna make sure that you're connected to Wi-Fi, and then on your ethernet connection, go to wired connection one, go to edit, and over here on IPv4 settings, we're going to change this to shared to other computers and save it. Now click on your Wi-Fi connection, click on edit, go to the general tab and check all users may connect to this network. This will allow the device to connect to the Wi-Fi network without needing to log in. Hit save and close. We're going to make sure that we've got an internet connection. After the initial setup, I did have to reboot this machine to get an internet connection. I don't know if it was something wonky with the setup, uh, but after that reboot, uh, I've been fine with connection ever since. Now you should be able to run an ethernet cable from the ethernet port on your Raspberry Pi to the internet port on your secondary router. After you've done that, power on your secondary router and test it with another wireless device to see if you can connect to that router's network. For example, this router's wireless network is Netgear 04. After you've connected, test your internet connection with that wireless device. Now you're done configuring everything. You can remove the mouse, the keyboard, and the monitor, and this device can run headless. We talked about this in theory, and now I want to see it in practice. Um, I've had this set up here in the cabin for about two weeks now, and pardon the mess here, I'm actually renovating the place. So there's sawdust, tools, um, everything everywhere. There's drywall dust. It's just a complete mess here. Um, but basically, over here, over here you can see that I've got the Raspberry Pi hooked up, and it's in the window. The Wi-Fi signal is feeding into here, and then the uh, cabled connection is coming out of here. And expert cabling job, I know, but because of all the sawdust in here, I can't have electronics in here. So this is just a quick setup, and I'm going to tear it all down when I'm done. But it's feeding into a wall plate here, and then that wall plate is coming out. Uh, there's a cable going up through the, the wall into the ceiling coming down over here and out this wall plate and then feeding into more of the expert cabling job, the uh, Netgear router here. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a, like I said, I had to take my TV out of here because of the uh, dust, but I've got a computer monitor just hanging on the wall now. And I want to show you, I want to show you the, the, uh, that there is indeed an internet connection. There's a line coming out of this router feeding into an El Cheapo Android box here. And I've got uh, YouTube up on the box, so it works, and damn, that's a good-looking guy. Okay, so as we can see, the video playback is pretty smooth. I'm going to just let that play, and I'm going to come over here and show you how the Wi-Fi is. This is my iPad setting across the room from the Wi-Fi router. So as you can see, I'm connected to Netgear 04. That is the Wi-Fi router. And I'm going to do a speed test. Come on. That's a bit on the low side, and I believe that's because the uh, Raspberry Pi is the bottleneck. Normally, I get uh, around 100, 110 for my connection in the main home. That is cabled in, though. But this is adequate for what we're doing here. Uh, our video is still playing over here. 
And I want to go into the back of the house where I was really having my problems. So now we're in the back bedroom, as, and as we can see, the uh, this is still playing back just fine. I want to do a speed test from back here and see what kind of connection we're getting. Okay, it's actually gotten a little bit better back here. Crazy. And like I said, it's not as good as it is in my main home, but it's adequate for providing a guest network to a second home. This is a wall port in the back bedroom if I wanted to cable anything in. Uh, it's feeding to that router in the living room. Um, it's there for any kind of future proofing, future use. Back in the living room, that video is still playing, so or it's rolled into another one. I didn't stop it when we went back to the bedroom, so um, yeah. And lucky me, now I gotta tear all this stuff down, pack it up, and get it out of here. I do know that it works, so in the future when it comes to uh, setting this stuff up, I know that it's gonna work just fine. Um, in, in all honesty, I've had this set up in here for about a week now, and I've popped in about every other day to check on it to make sure that everything's still working fine. I haven't had to reboot the Raspberry Pi. I imagine at some point that will be a maintenance schedule thing that will need to be done, but uh, for the past week and a half, it's been A-OK. -okay. Now make sure that you do not name your secondary Wi-Fi network the same name as your primary Wi-Fi network. These are completely different networks and your wireless devices could get confused if they try to automatically connect and bounce back and forth between the two networks. Also, the Raspberry Pi is something that your guests will have physical access to if you don't lock it up. So make sure that you have a really secure password on that thing. If not, this is a weak link to your primary network. So that's it. If you're having trouble getting a connection to a secondary location, I hope this can help you out in some capacity. Is there a better way I could have done it? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content uploads. Also, be sure to follow the show on social media. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And as always, stick around till after the credits if you want to get got. Are you ready? Here it comes. Ah.